Thank you, Mr. Mr. Doggett. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Uh, since vo first joining this Ways and Means Committee more than 20 years ago, one of my top priorities has been shutting down abusive offshore tax havens. And all that time, Republicans have been doing all that they can to protect that tax evasion. Back in 2001, then Republican leader Dick Armey was castigating the OECD in almost the very same words we have just heard today. They favor allowing the biggest corporations to dodge their responsibility to fairly contribute to our national security and other vital public services. When these profitable multinationals can shift profits, profits they've earned designing new products right here in America, profits they've earned selling to American consumers, and move that into tax havens, we all lose. Small businesses and other domestic businesses, like a car dealer, cannot secret their earnings in some offshore tax haven. International tax dodging shifts more of the tax burden to those businesses like that and to working Americans, to a nurse, to a firefighter, to a teacher, many of whom end up paying a greater proportion of their earnings into our Treasury than the largest, most profitable multinationals in the world. The Joint Committee on Taxation looked at the facts, at the effect of the 2017 Trump Republican tax scam, what impact it had on the 88 largest American multinationals. Before their scam was enacted, those 88 multinationals averaged of only 16%. After the tax scam, their rate was cut to 7.8%, certainly a rate any police officer would be delighted to pay but is unable to do so. Now we can understand why Republicans are working so hard to shield these profitable companies from a 15% tax minimum. Last year, U.S. multinationals booked $325 billion in profits in the top seven offshore tax havens. This contrasts with their reporting only $50 billion in seven of the world's largest economies where they were doing business. IRS data shows that American firms reported far more earnings in the Cayman Islands, population 65,000, than they did in China and Canada combined. Indeed, American multinationals reported $60 billion in profits in the Cayman Islands in 2019. This, of course, is impossible since the total economic uh, output of the Cayman Islands is only $6 billion. Just think about that, $60 billion on which they paid an effective rate of six-tenths of 1%. This is a fraud on the American people, pure and simple, and those that defend it are aiding and abetting that fraud. Thankfully, because of the leadership of Secretary Yellen, the Biden administration has been a leader. They have led the world more than 140 countries in what even the Wall Street Journal has reported as the most important tax deal to be agreed upon in, by such a large group of countries within a century. In none of the top 10 countries where U.S. multinationals employ workers are they paying less than a 20 percent tax rate. And in none of the 10 countries where they book their profits do they pay more than 7 percent, with rates going down to the six-tenths of 1 percent in the Caymans. Mr. Plowgen, what is required to stop this outrage and this fraud on small businesses and individual American taxpayers? One straightforward way to uh, address the issue of, of profit shifting in, uh, by, by multinationals would be to reform our guilty rules uh, so that they apply on a country by country basis. Uh, the current law guilty applies on a globally blended basis, which means that uh, foreign tax credits for taxes paid in high tax jurisdictions shield uh, the profits in, in low tax jurisdictions. And how would other countries increasing their taxes to make these multinationals pay at least 15 percent minimum tax, how would that actually make America more competitive? Yeah, it makes uh, America more competitive in multiple ways. Um, it allows the U.S. to maintain a robust uh, corporate tax system uh, because it uh, prevents uh, the uh, shifting of profits offshore. 
um, and, and allows the U.S. to uh, tax multinationals at reasonable rates. And to compete based on our education system, our workforce, our justice system, our national security. Thank you so much for your service and your testimony.